In the previous Tips and Tricks episode, we looked at how to create parametric shelves. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to populate those shelves with randomized books. To get started, download the tutorial files from i2soft's website and open booksstart.max. In the scene, you'll find a number of book models, some splines for the shelf, and a starting rail clone object called RC Books. Open the style editor and you'll see that all the book segments have already been added. None of the default settings have been changed, it's just to save a bit of time. There's also a spline node here, and the first thing we're going to need is a linear array. We'll plug the spline into that, and pick these shelf splines from the scene. As well as randomizing the geometry, we're going to want to randomize the textures on the book, so we'll bring in a material operator and plug this into the default input. Go to the properties and change the replace material ID value to 2, and change it to randomize from 2 to 100. Now to randomize the geometry, add a randomize operator and plug each of these into an input. Once that's done, wire the randomize operator into the material node. And you can see on the shelf splines now we have a randomized selection of books. Um, they're sitting on the bottom of the books on the, on the spline, which is correct, but uh, we really want the splines to be at the back of the bookshelf, and at the moment, as you can see, the books sit about in the center. So rather than go through and correct each one of these segments in turn, which will take a while, we can add a transform operator between the randomized node and the material node. And then from here, we can kind of bulk change all 11 books by just turning on alignment and changing the Y alignment from automatic to top. It'll push those forward so that the back of the book sits on that spline. We also, while we're here, could add a little more randomization. We have 11 book sizes in here, but we can randomize within that by just coming down here to turn on scale and adding about a sort of 10% leeway either side of that 100% mark. So we go to 95 to 105 for each axis. You now we've got a little bit more randomization in there. And we could also push the books randomly away from the back of this spline a little bit so that they move backs and forwards uh, by turning on translation and changing the Y value here to say negative 0.02. If we come over to the linear array and just have a look at what's going on at the end here, you can see the books are all being sliced off so that you can see inside them. Um, that's not really desirable. A couple of ways to fix this. I could go into the linear array and go to rules and change the mode to adaptive. Um, and that will make sure that there's always a whole book on the end there. But occasionally when using randomized widths, you'll find that adaptive mode pushes the last book over to the edge of the spline. And if this were in a bookcase, this book might pop out the side. So it's not ideal. So instead of doing that, I'm going to switch this back to tile. And I'm going to use a conditional operator instead. Just pop it between transform and material there. And I'm wire the transform into the true input and then the conditional into the material and then I'm going to change the conditional settings so that it's a position on the spline section and uh, in order for this to be true it has to be less than say about 99 percent and you'll find then that you don't get a book right on the end. You may have to change this setting depending on the length of the spline. Now that this style's done I'm going to close the style editor and duplicate it and use it to build a few other rail clone styles here, little mini ones. So we're going to have a stack of books on this spline. On this one, books that are angled over to the left, and on this one, books that are angled over to the right. Hit Control V to clone it. Come over to the Modify panel in the Base Objects and just reassign this spline stacking object here. And let's get in a little bit closer and see what this looks like. Open the Style Editor, and there are a few things we want to change. Um, firstly, we're not going to need the conditional operator for this style, so we can take that out. And if we come into the linear array, we can change the rules this time to adaptive, since the height is slightly less critical. Now, it's aligning uh, to this spline along the back edge, and we want it to align in the center. So come into this transform node, go into the alignment, and change Y to center, and do the same for Z. That's a nice neat stack at the moment, so let's mess it up a little. Come into the transform settings, we'll turn off scale on this particular occasion, go into rotation, and in the, on the Y axis, set this to minus 15 and 15. Let's randomize the translation a little as well, so we can go from minus 0.02 to 0.02, and the same on the Z axis. 
and that's nearly there. Um, but if we change the random seed, we get random selection of books, but they're all the same height. Um, and what we want really is for sometimes there's three books, sometimes five. There's a randomized number. And one way of doing that is to randomize, add a second randomized node, put it between the transform and the materials. And in the second input, just add an empty segment and wire that in to the randomized node. And what happens if you've got a segment with no no geometry and no padding um, is that if that happens to get selected it will sort of kill the array at that point so if I go through the random seed here you'll see sometimes there's no books sometimes there's a whole stack and we can control the likelihood of this empty segment being selected by going into the randomized node if we just change the presence to say 15 percent um, then we're more likely to get taller stacks of books and you can play with this value I'm now going to duplicate this style to create the angled books. Control V to duplicate and reassign this spline here. Open the style editor. Come into the existing transform node and change the alignment back to automatic for Z and top for Y so it matches the other books on the bookshelf. Come to the transform settings and turn off the randomized translation and rotation controls. Come up to the fixed settings and set the X rotation to minus 5. Now we want something for these books to lean against but we don't want a situation where they're leaning against thin air so we will add a new transform operator wire this randomized node into it and just set this alignment so it's the same with Y set to top and the difference with this one is that we're not setting the transform to negative 5 so it's just upright and wire this into the start input slot. And there we go we've got um, one upright then some leaning books and a randomized number depending on the seed. Now duplicate this one more time to create the angles going the other way. We assign spline books uh, right as the spline and open the style editor and now this time we want to come into the transform operator here uh, go to the transform settings and change it from minus 5 to 5 now we don't want this book at the start anymore, we want it at the end, but we can't just plug this into the end slot because it'll always appear on the far right hand side irrespective of how many books there are in between so what we need to do is sort of combine it with this segment that's slicing the array off and um, we can do that using a compose operator so bring the compose operator in, plug the, this transform operator into that and then plug the empty segment into the compose and then swap with the empty segment in the randomize operator here for this compose one and now you can see that's uh, working uh, the array ends and then there's an upright book but there is a slight padding issue um, because this book's intersecting the adjacent so if we come into this transform operator turn on padding and on the left hand side add a padding value of about 0 0.02 um, just to push that away enough that it looks like it's resting on it and that should fix that now that we've done that select the books on the shelf again and we're going to nest these three rail clone objects we just created into this master style so open the style editor and create three new segment objects and pick each of these rail clone styles from the scene it's the angles and the stacks we want to randomly pick between those so add a new randomized operator and plug each of those in and we also want to now randomly select between whether it's an upright book or whether it's one that's a stack or an angle so we add a third randomized operator and plug in the upright books and then plug in the possibility of the nested rail clone objects and connect this to the transform input and what you'll see first of all uh, a couple of things there are too many stacks and angled books, there are very few uprights and, um, and they're all the same all the stacks are identical so first of all let's deal with the quantity if we come into the randomize node go into the present settings here and just turn down randomize um, the second input to about 10% maybe 8 so you get fewer and in order to make sure that these are randomized for every instance it's a simple tick box you go into the segment deform settings and just turn on nest and that will reseed the nested rail clone objects every time they're used so let's turn on nest for all of them 
and um, and that fixes that problem. You can see the ones that are there are all slightly different, but we're also getting gaps now along the shelves, and that's because occasionally these stacks are picking uh, no segments at all. You know, as part of the randomization, there are no books, which gives us an empty segment. And as we've seen, we use that to our advantage over here to create a random number of books. But when it's on these shelves, it's not the result we're after. The easy fix for that is to make sure that this segment, even if it has no geometry in it, has a physical width. And to do that, change the padding. Left will do to 0.001 meters, a small value. And, um, and then you won't have that problem occur. So the last problem you might encounter is, is books getting sliced off the end a little more. These wider books might throw out the spacing a little. And uh, if these occur, because they're so much larger, if these occur too near an end, you'll find they get, they get sliced. If I randomize it, I can probably get that to occur. There we go. There, I haven't got a stack, but you can see one of those segments is being sliced there. And we really need to be able to control the possibility of one of these single books appearing before the end and one of these combination books appearing to the end. So the way to do that is to clone this conditional operator, just control and V. And then we'll connect we'll connect this randomized node into the true input and connect the conditional operator to the transforms input and connect the individual books, the randomized node for those, into the false input of the new conditional operator. We've got the ability to control independently with this conditional operator how far away from the end of this spline these nested rail clone objects will occur. So I can change this to about 85% maybe, just to push them a little further back and then hopefully we won't get any slicing on the ends. So that's it. In this style we nested three rail clone objects to create random numbers of angled or stacked books. Um, and to distribute the books, this style used one spline per shelf, but it's also possible to use exactly the same technique in the X evenly slots of an A2S generator to automatically generate equally spaced shelves from a simple spline and height dimension. Please stay tuned for future training, and for more information about many other aspects of Rail Clones features, please in the meantime see our reference section or visit our tutorials page for more tips and tricks videos, as well as more in-depth tutorials.